I'm delighted and very, and it's honoured to have uh, Matthew Shord from Casella Brands join the uh, join the webinar today. Um, Matthew's going to spend a little bit of time talking around um, how how Casella have uh, have dealt with some of the challenges uh, recently, um, and take us through how Anaplan has uh, hopefully supported their uh, their business through these these recent challenges. Hi Matthew, um, welcome to the uh, webinar. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Um, how about we start off with just a quick introduction, Matthew, just take a little bit who you are and a little bit about Casella. Sure, no, no trouble. Uh, so my name is Matthew Shord. Uh, I work for Casella Family Brands. Uh, as the name suggests, we're a family-owned uh, winemaker from Australia. Uh, we've got a number of brands, including Peter Lehman. I think the one that everybody knows, though, is uh, Yellowtail. So hopefully most people on this uh, call would have tried Yellowtail. <laughs> At, at, at some point. Um, so as I said, I'm the financial controller for Casella in Europe uh, and Casella Europe is responsible for sales, uh, marketing and distribution across uh, around 30 countries across across the whole of Europe. Um, and I initially worked with Bedford on our uh, initial Anaplan uh, implementation, which was about four years ago now. Excellent. Um, definitely, there's a. Uh, I, I'm sure, certainly a lot of the, most of the Bedford team are, uh, are consumers of uh, certainly Yellowtail. I've seen floating around a bit, so uh, yeah, it's very well recognised. In terms of um, Anaplan and your journey with Anaplan, what what do you currently use Anaplan for? Um, well, I guess you boil it down to kind of three main use cases. So the first one being uh, sales forecasting, uh, which, if you like, kind of establishes the demand for our products. Uh, we use it for supply planning, which at its simplest is really matching supply to that demand. And, and sitting on top of that, we also use it for kind of long term financial forecasting as well. So it'd be fair to say that Anaplan's kind of fairly deeply embedded within our business processes, certainly sales forecasting and demand planning, because that's kind of what we do. Um, whereas the financial forecasting is a kind of bit more specialist and kind of sits on top of both of those. Um, I think today we'll probably talk mostly around the supply side of things, but um, given that each of our Anaplan modules are kind of intimately connected, it's kind of inevitable that we'll talk about the other aspects as they as they kind of uh, in, in, interact with each other. Excellent. Sounds uh, sounds really good and uh, delighted to hear of those numerous use cases uh, that you're benefiting from. So what, what's happened in the last, uh, I suppose, months to probably a bit more than months at, uh, at Casella and how, how have you reacted and, uh, and coped with some of the, the challenges that we've all been provided with? <laughs> well, I guess what hasn't happened is, is maybe the better question. So, I mean, we've had a, an event, everybody's had an event for 12 months, haven't they? So, uh, and Casella has been no different. So uh, we've essentially had to come three, overcome three big external challenges. Um, so kind of one after the other, or possibly you could say one kind of on top of the other. So we've had Brexit, we've obviously had the global pandemic, and, uh, and more recently we've had the Suez Canal blockage as well, which is which was another thing to kind of deal with. And, and I guess to put all three of those in context, it's, it's worth, um, you know, before we talk about how we've used Anaplan for kind of agile planning, if you like, I think the context that we need to be aware of is that as we're dealing with Australian wine, the supply lead times are, 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 are pretty long, you know, compared with most businesses. Um, so to give you an example, it would take roughly 16 weeks from the point at which we order bulk wine from Australia to have that wine shipped across to the UK, um, bottled in the UK, labelled, palletised, going through a quality control procedure before we can then get, get the product in the hands of our customers. So kind of short-term pivoting is, is quite difficult for a business like ours. So, um, so we have to have, find kind of like intelligent ways around you know, all, each of those three challenges that I, I, I mentioned. Excellent, sounds fascinating. And, and yeah, it's that picking it up from the supermarket aisle or uh, it, to, to, you don't appreciate everything that's going in to get that bottle of wine to that, exactly. uh, to that supermarket. Whereas I'm sure you, you have a, a, a absolute appreciation for that <laughs> in your role. Um, so you mentioned, you mentioned three areas there. You mentioned about uh, COVID, Brexit and the, uh, and recently the Suez Canal. Do, do, 
let's just take uh, each at its own uh, value and just talk through mm -hmm. what that impact has been to Casella and, and hopefully how Anaplan has supported. So do you want to talk us, I suppose, let's, should we start off at the uh, the first one as, as Brexit? Is that okay with you? Let's start with Brexit now. So that was obviously quite a long, uh, quite a long story. Uh, really, but I'll, I'll try and uh, I'll try and shorten it for today's audience. So, uh, so I guess it'd be fair to say Brexit was something we all knew was coming, but we weren't really clear on kind of what the rules of the game were, if you like, kind of what the trading environment was going to be. And uh, that's especially true in the complex world of importing, exporting something like wine, which is subject to tariffs, excise duties, regulations, and a lot of accompanying paperwork. So, it, it's quite difficult to to, to kind of plan in that em environment. Now, we do hold a level of buffer stock in the UK uh, where a bottling occurs, but that's kind of no good to have the stock in the UK if you need it for your distributor in Ireland or your distributor in Germany. So our solution was to essentially make sure we place sufficient stock within the EU market ahead of the end of the Brexit transition period in December 20. So our rough plan was to kind of put three, possibly four months worth of stock um, with our European customers and distributors bef before the end of the year um, to make sure they had sufficient buffer to cope with any uh, with any issues that would that, that would occur. So uh, how that worked in practice is kind of we agreed that plan with our European customers and distributors, and then essentially normal our normal and a plan process is kind of kicked in from that point onwards so you agree a different plan with your customers the next step would be to amend our sales forecast in line with that plan so essentially bringing forward that demand and then plan our stock build accordingly uh, so making sure we'd built sufficient stock over a period of months to make sure the stock was available for collection or delivery before that december de uh, you know deadline so um I guess I guess it's worth noting here that this is where the supply and sales elements of our Anaplan uses intersect with the, our financial forecasting and our financial planning because you know clearly building a substantial level of stock has implications for working capital, cash, and cash flow. Um, and the way we use Anaplan, it, effectively Anaplan helped us calculate what that additional working capital requirement would be. So if you're the kind of business that if you have to invest in working capital then needs to go and speak to your bank around some short-term credit facilities and what have you, that's that's one way in which you can use Anaplan and kind of that connected planning. So you know a change in demand equals a change in supply equals a change in your financial forecast. And that 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 that's a kind of flow of information that occurs uh with within Anaplan. Um, Probably one extra thing to just say on on uh, on on Brexit is just uh, around how we used uh, something we call, something called lists in Anaplan. So, uh, as you'll know, Adam, you can create lists in Anaplan um, to help you slice and dice your data. So we created a new list which was around territory. So we created kind of four new territories: UK, Northern Ireland, EU, and kind of rest of Europe. And we we put each of our customers or distributors into one of those territories. And that made it easy for us to understand the kind of sales and supply dynamics by territory. You know, because coming into Brexit, it wasn't clear what the rules would be in Northern Ireland versus the EU versus the UK. So to be able to understand that dynamics quickly and easily, not have to kind of manually calculate it every time, you know, a change in the forecast, you can instantaneously see kind of what your Northern Ireland plan look like or what your uh, EU plan look like. So essentially we've used our existing Brexit uh, uh, and our plan functionality but kind of repurposed it uh, as, as the environment changed. Excellent and that 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 speed and the agility in being able to do that in Anaplan certainly will yield the values and and fascinating story of Brexit and Brexit was certainly one we knew was coming there was plenty <laughs> There's, the warnings were there. There was plenty of time to prepare, and it's just good to hear Anaplan enabled you to uh, to prepare and implement a strategy that that ultimately worked for for Casella. Um, where should we go next? Let's go to to COVID. Um, talk us through the impact of COVID to to Casella family brands and and how you've used Anaplan to to react to that. Sure, no problem. Um, well. 
I mean, I, I guess if we said Brexit was something we saw coming, COVID probably wasn't something we all saw coming. Uh, although I guess if you if you cast your mind back, you know, we, we did kind of see it creeping closer and closer to the UK. So we did have a bit of time to to, to, to plan and, and take some evasive action at the time. So, uh, I mean, to answer your question, what's what has COVID done to our business? Well, you know, as you said in the, in the, in the setup, uh, Adam, there's kind of hospitality, the on trade at various times over the last 12 months has has kind of dropped back to virtually zero. It's either been zero or or you know substantially you know restrained by COVID rules. The flip side of that is we've seen a big increase in kind of take home purchases, you know, at, at home wine consumption. Um, uh, and that's the area where yellow tail is strong. So uh, we've seen, you know, really unprecedented levels of demand over the last, you know, 12 months. And again, if we cast our mind back to last March and April, there was actually kind of an element of kind of panic buying within, within the shops, you know, if, if you recall. And um, it's, um, you know, given what we said earlier on about, you know, lead times, that means that we're not able to accommodate very large, unforecasted swings in demand at short notice. But we do, however, carry a, a kind of buffer level of stock, um, which meant that we were able to selectively increase sales whilst ensuring we didn't go out of stock. So, you know, we use Anaplan to help us make sure we we, we trod that tightrope between maximizing sales but 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 not going out of, out, out of stock. So you know, to give an example, if we would typically carry maybe eight weeks worth of stock, um, you know, we took the decision to go down to say maybe three, possibly four weeks of stock to accommodate the additional demand. Um, if you go below that, you really are running a risk because you know a vessel delay or a delay in the production facility, you'll be out of stock. And, you know, that is, that's the kind of the worst crime in, in, in FMCG or, in, you know, in one's wine sales is kind of being out of stock. So uh, how we use Anaplan is, is, is we can use Anaplan to tell us how many weeks worth of stock we currently have. So we look at our stock on hand, we look at our sales forecast demand, and Anaplan can turn that into a number of weeks worth of stock holding. So if I look today, it might say we've got eight weeks of stock holding. So um, if we then have an upswing in demand, we can look at that uh, using Anaplan and say, well, okay, so if we accommodate this level of demand, what does that do to our stock holding? Um, and we can look at future weeks as well. So, it, it, you know, we, we know the production schedule, we know the sales forecast, Anaplan marries those two things together and it basically says, you know, for each of our products, this product is predicted to have eight weeks, then it go into six and five and four and three. So we can manage that, you know, that tension between supply and demand uh, using Anaplan. So um, we also used it to uh, help us manage our promotional mix as well. So, uh, you know, when you've got increased demand, that kind of doesn't make sense running heavyweight promotions. Uh, in, in our big customers. So, so we looked at selectively taking out some promotions to free up a certain number of weeks worth of stock and kind of distribute those across our, our customer base. So again, it's, it's, the, it's the connection between the sales forecast and the supply planning and, and using that to look forward and make choices about what we do or don't do with our levels of supply. So, um, you know, I, I think probably so this time last year, we'd have all seen pictures of um, of empty shelves at, at, at supermarkets. We were able to kind of kind of restrain ourselves, if you like, in terms of you know not falling into the temptation of oversupply, being able to kind of throttle back that supply. So we were always able to keep pace with demand and avoid out of stocks. Um, and then, of course, in the background, we were increasing. Um, the levels of dispatches of, 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 of bulk wine from Australia and then gearing up to in the fullness of time to support this greater demand. So, you know, effectively, we, we would have had a period of 12, 14 weeks of, of having to manage that dynamic. And then we were able to catch up and, and uh, you know, really, really satisfy that, that incremental demand. So, um, you know, I, I think we did a fairly good job kind of managing our way through that.
Fascinating. And, and Anaplan modelled all those those variables out for you, and you could see that in terms of how it supported your longer range forecast. What is the impact of this? What are, are we putting products in the right place? Are we meeting demand? You shut down some of the trade promos, um, but ultimately yeah. Anaplan gave you that that full visibility to the end. Is that correct? It did, yes. And and, and the, as I say, the the lens we viewed it from, because it kind of summarises everything, is that number of weeks stock holding. So we have a kind of like um, a, a formatting in, in, in the way we've built Anaplan that basically says, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit like Goldilocks's porridge, not too hot, not too cold. And stock holding is a bit like, the, you know, it, it's similar. You, you don't hold on to too much because it costs you too much money to hold on to it, but you can't hold on to too little. So, you know, if the stock holding, number of weeks stock holding kind of went amber or red in our system, we knew it was kind of, in this case, too low. So it enabled us to manage within those kind of tram lines, if you like, until we kind of um, uh, readapted ourselves to kind of the new normal, if you like, over the you know for the, for the increased demand. Excellent. And and just just on on that, obviously, there's there would have been everyone was reading the newspapers, seeing the the shelves empty. In terms of the your the people inside Casello must have wondered. How's this impacting us? How are we reacting to it? How have you, obviously, with all that, that ability to plan, model, scenario, mm -hmm. has, we, we use that information to put confidence into your own team, sharing those plans. How, how did how did Anna plan support in? We've got a strategy. We know where we're going through through COVID, and and this is it. Did it did it ultimately feed into other people in the business as well? Well, absolutely, yes, because you know you. Your, your sales team and your supply team can't work separately. We kind of have to work collaboratively. So, so, so kind of what we do is, is there's a strong level of trust within the business that the Alaplan data is to be trusted. Um, I mean, the sales team kind of had to trust it because they put the, they put the sales forecast in in the first place, um, and their supply planning is fairly mechanical in the sense that it just, you know we aim to kind of meet meet that demand. So uh, I think the bit where the uh, the other plan functionality and the team came together is the point at which we made we made decisions about what we would do. So um, you know Anna plan did the calculations if you like the, the the number crunching but as a team we had to get together and say you know on this line we're happy to go down to a certain number of weeks worth of stock. Um, on, on on this line, we're happy to go down to a different level of number of weeks worth of stock. Uh, we can accommodate that promotion. We can't accommodate that promotion. So so once you've made your decision, it's very easy then just to change you know change the sales forecast, and then that will effectively instantaneously interface with your supplier planning. So you can kind of see real time. Okay, what does that what does that what does that do to the the latest supplier picture? Excellent. So it's it's fascinating, and all those variables all coming together, and how Anaplan can support, and that that collaborative approach to uh, to planning as well. is uh, sounds brilliant. Um, I suppose so. That's COVID, um, and as you said, you it it was reactive, but you could see it coming. It was creeping towards us. Um, <laughs> let's 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 dive into the uh, the Suez Canal blockage, which was I'm not too sure you'd have had a a plan or many people would have expected it to be blocked and have uh, and know what to do with that so let's talk us through how the news landed at, uh, at Casella <laughs> and whereabouts in the world your wine was traveling at that time well I mean that, that's that's a good question so I mean I mean Yellowtail is, is is the number three wine brand in the UK and all our wine comes from Australia to the UK and then on to Europe via the Suez Canal so um, you know, the, the blockage was potentially a massive, massive issue for us and our customers. Um, and um, there was real uncertainty behind it because, um, you know, if you remember from the from the news reports, some people were saying, what, well, this could take weeks to fix. You know, they, they were waiting for the kind of a high tide, if you like, to kind of refloat the boat. And, and beyond that window, it, it, you know, it, it could have been stuck there for weeks. So, uh, we kind of, you know, if the other two examples were really using existing functionality, but just changing the um, changing the assumptions and working as a team to agree what those assumptions and what the rules were, if you like, 
Um, sewage was a bit different. It was more in the realm of kind of like disaster recovery, you know, I, 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 I would suggest. So, um, so uh, effectively, we'd, we'd have convened a team to look at this, you know, uh, uh, as, as a matter of, of kind of emergency. Um, so just to give you some, again, more background of kind of how supply planning in our business works in practice, it involves us kind of planning specific production runs based on the timing of vessel arrivals. So a vessel arrives in the UK, you schedule a production run, and that's kind of how it how it works. Um, but obviously the timing of the vessel arrivals was the bit that was very, very much up in the air. You know, we, we had uh, a, a ship stuck in the canal. We had two more that were in the queue before you got to the canal. We had three or four more on the water between Australia and uh, and 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 Suez, um, and of course they're not our boat, so we can't say to the captain, you know, go around Africa. Just go around <laughs> you the know, corner. You 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 just can't do it. You know, you know, we're we're a fairly you know we're a big player in wine, but we'd have had, you know, four, five, ten, twelve, twenty containers on a ship that's got hundreds and hundreds of containers. So you're really at the mercy of, 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 of kind of what happened in a scenario like that. So, so given that we'd already built a specific short-term production plan based on vessel arrivals and scheduling within our production facility, when we came to think about, okay, disaster recovery, what we're gonna do, kind of wanted to maintain the integrity of all that work that was already done. So not just to kind of rip that up and, and start again, to kind of take the integrity, keep the integrity of that, but, but maybe take some planning kind of offline, in inverted commas, and, and, and kind of do some scenario planning and, and work out kind of what if. So what Anaplan allows you to do is to take one of your modules, but make a copy of it. So I took our existing supply planning module, I took a copy of it that only I had, had access to, so I could play around with and still maintain the integrity of you know, the, the, the core planning module. So I took a copy of our supply planning module, modeled out what would happen if there was a two week delay, a four week delay, six week delay, you know, uh, what would that do to our stock holding? So again, looking at our level of stock holding, number of weeks worth of stock that you're holding onto, that's a really handy kind of uh, KPI in, in, in a scenario like this. Um, and so we, we looked at kind of, okay, so if we if the ships were delayed, at what point would we run out of stock? At what point do we think we might need to intervene? Uh, maybe reassess promotional uh, you know, uh, calendars, maybe reassess uh, the amount of, you know, maybe maybe cap forecast to 80% or something like that in in a certain in a certain scenario. So uh, so, so, you know, and, and obviously products aren't, our products aren't necessarily interchangeable. So if a customer wants to order Chardonnay, you can't say, well, I've run out of Chardonnay, here, here you go, you can have Shiraz. It kind of doesn't work like that. So you've got to do this line by line. So it's quite complicated work. If you were to do it on a spreadsheet, that would be very, very time consuming. Um, so I kind of modeled out a range of different scenarios. And then off the back of that, we were able to establish how we might respond in each of those scenarios. So, you know, two week delay, not really a problem. We've got six, eight weeks worth of stock overall. Four week delay, might start getting a bit tight on a couple of lines, probably okay. Six week delay, okay, you might start running out of stock on a couple of lines. You're gonna have to start doing something different in in that scenario so against each of the scenarios um and this is this is where we kind of um again like in the earlier example we, we've used our plan to do the calculations but then you have to combine that with getting a cross-functional team together and coming up coming up with a plan so in each of the scenarios we came up with an action plan um and we were able to then communicate with our customers and say as things stand, this is this is how things look. In scenario A, business as usual, we'll supply to your forecast. Scenario B, business as usual, we can supply to your forecast. Scenario C, here's what we would do. 
Um, now, I mean, as it happens, I think the um, I think the vessel was only uh, stuck in the canal for a week. Um, but in reality, beyond that, you still had kind of two or three weeks worth of delays as you then got kind of a build up of vessels arriving at the port and rescheduling of production. Um, so it did create a bit of a bottleneck you know, scenario, again, that we needed to, to, to kind of plan around. So, uh, but I mean, as it was, we, we, we managed to make sure we didn't run out of stock on any lines. And we got some really good feedback from our customers in, in terms of how proactive we were, um, how quickly we got back to them with our disaster recovery plan. So you, uh, shared, so you actually shared those plans we, with, we, with, we with shared, the customers? We shared it with our customers, yeah. We shared it with our customers because we wanted to be on the front foot. There's no point in um, saying everything's okay until it's not. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, because you, you're not giving your customer a, a chance to react. What we basically said was, in these circumstances, everything's okay. However, in this circumstance, there's something else we need to do. Oh, and by the way, this is our suggestion of what it is that we think we would do in this circumstance. And then it enabled our customers to have a think about that and either agree with our plan or suggest something different in that circumstance. You know, how they you know, saw that they could, they could manage maybe um, um, a kind of reduction in, in supply. So um, it, was, it was kind of something that threatened to be a really big problem. As it was, it didn't turn out to be a big problem, but we got quite a lot of brownie points, if you like, with our customers for our ability to be able to respond. I think they said we were the first supplier. You know, we, we got actually written feedback from a couple of the customers that said that we were the first supplier to come back with like, detailed plans, you know, right. to them. So, you know, in, in some ways we dodged we dodged a bullet because it, it didn't happen. But in other ways, we kind of prove the robustness of our ability to plan and uh, we proved that uh, you know we could spend instead of spending 90 percent of your time uh, crunching the numbers and 10 percent of your time running around in panic deciding what you're going to do we could spend 10 percent of our time crunching the numbers and 90 percent of our time action planning and communicating so um, you know, as, as, as far as our customers are concerned, it's really it's it's all in their communication. They don't really care what goes on before you get to that point, but you need to give yourself the um, you know, the, the 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 space and able to, to you know to, to kind of be able to do that, and that's what our plan helps us do. Fantastic story, and and it's I find the customer bit really interesting because it's not something we would naturally think about. We've got a modelling platform. How how is that related to that customer and and ultimately, how are they uh, reacting to that? And to to build relationships off the back of being able to plan quickly and share those plans and various scenarios that you built out there is uh, is excellent story. Um, I suppose just as a as a, there's three great stories there, Matthew. Um, I'm I'm looking at the Brexit story, and I'm it's we we knew what was coming. We could share, we could look at business impact, we could plan and ensure we had the best strategy in place. Is what I, I took from from yeah. that. COVID, there was the sudden change in demand profile. Um, you saw it coming, but not not at the foresight of uh, of Brexit. That sudden change, updating your channels uh, appropriately to meet the demand. Looking at as you say, stock holding linking all of the business units together as well to a to a plan uh, really came through and then uh, i think from the, the suez canal what i'm taking from that is the ability to scenario plan in anna plan um to have those scenarios was it five days was it going to be 10 days was it going to be six mm -hmm. weeks eight weeks um to be able to run those plans up decide internally what is the right thing to do in each of those scenarios is extremely powerful but then layering on the the customer pieces uh as well um, and how you how it enabled you to grow relationships and be the first to talk to your customers as well i think that's really powerful that you were the first to to knock on that door and say yes we have a problem with the canal this is what we're planning on doing in each of these scenarios i think is in incredibly powerful and it's great to hear that that, that helped your customer relationship and i'm pleased that uh, that the impact was nowhere near what uh, what could have been the case mm. um 
really great stories. Just I suppose to to sum up or to finalise, just Anaplan. Ne where, where next for Anaplan with the uh, Casella family family brand? Is there anything that you're are you seeing more opportunity for for Anaplan in the business? Have you learned through these areas that that through these uh, these impacts? How important Anaplan is to your business now? Well, I mean. I mean, I, 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 I said at the top of this that you know we use it for sales forecasting, supply planning, and financial, long-term financial planning. I mean, aside from marketing, that's kind of what we do. So it, 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 it we, we're covering virtually all the bases anyway. Um, you know, I mean, in our financial, you know, because I'm, I'm an accountant, so this, this kind of stuff, uh, you know, appeals, appeals to me. But you know, in our uh, our initial Anna plan implementation was just the sales forecast. Then we added the supply planning. Then we added the financial forecasting. So I guess to a certain extent, we've been through that journey of trying to maximise the, the you know, sweat sweat the investment if you like in in Anna plan. Um, we 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 use it for things like looking at our uh, our, our, our long term cash flow. Uh, we look at our bank covenants using Anna plan. So it it it's it's pretty well embedded in, in in what we do um you know in in some ways the learnings are that um you know we've we've just kind of reaffirmed if you like that um that the, the our systems and processes are robust and, and i guess if the in the last 12 months if we've coped with brexit covid and Suez, <laughs> I, I i guess we could uh, I, I i guess we could kind of kind of cope with it with anything really Excellent. Really, really good story, uh, Matthew.